The large mansion that sits at 8th and Logan in Denver is the governor's residence, and it's often referred to as Colorado's home. Coco Christ, the executive director of Governor's Resident Preservation Fund, tells us all about it. All right, Coco, let's start by telling us just a little bit about the governor's, the Colorado governor's residence. Sure. So the residence was built in 1908 by Walter Cheeseman and his wife, Alice. Sadly, he passed before um, the residence was complete. So Alice lived here with her daughter, Gladys Cheeseman, and her husband, John Evans II. Um, later, they sold the home to the Betcher family in 1923. And... It was their family home for a long time until 1959 when the Betcher Foundation decided to gift it to the state. However, the state did not accept it right away. Um, it was sort of in limbo for about nine months until the last day of 1959 when Governor Stephen McNichols accepted the residence as a gift for the executive residence of the governor. Now, it's always called the governor's residence, if you will, but does the Governor Polis actually live there? Because I know not all governors have actually used that as their primary residence. Is that correct? Well, actually, fun fact, every governor has lived here at some point in their term. Um, currently, Governor Polis and his husband, Marlon, do not live here. They have a fantastic family home close to the kids' schools, and um, that's where they re reside. Well, that is a fun fact. I like that. All right. Why does the governor's residence need a preservation fund, and how do you raise funds for it? Well, as I mentioned, it was built in 1908, so it's about 112 years old, and there is constant maintenance and health and safety issues and artifacts and objects and fine art around the residence that need to be preserved and restored um, on a regular basis. So typically, we are able to host in-person fundraising events. However, as we all know, this year was kind of an anomaly, and we were only able to have one fundraising event in February. So um, we have kind of pivoted and have built a virtual education site. So we're not able to welcome the public this year through historic public education tours and holiday tours. Um, so instead we focused our efforts on building a virtual education website and um, we also sell holiday ornaments. And that's again, one of our largest fundraisers for the year. All right, let's talk about these ornaments. How many are actually available? There are 12 in a series, and they are made of solid brass dipped in 24 karat gold. It's the same company that makes the um, White House ornaments. They're gorgeous. They come in a gold embossed with um, a card that goes with it telling the story. Oh, those are. They're gorgeous. All right, well, tell us about the 2020 ornament and how people can buy one. Well, this year's exciting because it's the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment passage. So in 1893, actually, Colorado was one of the first states to ratify the 19th Amendment, granting women the right to vote. And um, later in 1920, the U.S. Congress needed 36 states, and Colorado was, was one of the states to ratify the 19th Amendment. So we decided to focus on women's suffrage and women's right to vote. Sounds exciting. Coco, we appreciate you being with us. You can view and purchase all the ornaments on the website at coloradoshome.org, or you can pick one up at the Molly Brown House Museum gift shop.